Okay, so here is our video on the scientific revolution. We already discussed in class how it was connected to things that we've already learned about. So today, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the PowerPoint that I gave you in class. There's also a copy of it in the barn, and anything that we discussed in the video that isn't on those notes, you want to make notes on the left side. So any information that you don't see on the handout, you're going to put on your left side, okay? All right, so some background info. Before the scientific revolution, before the Renaissance, the medieval view was that, I know this is making you dizzy, that the earth was an immovable object, it did not spin, and was at the center of the universe, and everything else revolved around it, okay? So that the earth was the center. Now this theory was known as the geocentric theory, geo meaning earth. And Aristotle came up with this idea. Aristotle uh, was born around 384 BC, and this theory was also supported by Ptolemy, a Greek astronomer who actually lived in um, what's now considered Egypt. And he was born around A.D. 90. Okay, so these were new ideas, actually, because before Aristotle and Ptolemy, people thought that the Earth was this flat thing with a canopy above it, which is where, like, the sky and the atmosphere was. No idea that it was round, that it was a globe, that it spun, that anything rotated. So while today we say, well, obviously that theory was wrong, it was actually very revolutionary, no pun intended, at the time. So here's uh, Claudius Ptolemy, uh, the famous Greek astronomer. Now Christianity also supported this idea once Christianity grew, because of course God would put the center um, the earth as the center, so they thought. Now, Nicholas Copernicus, um, who lived in what's modern-day Poland, lived from 1473 to 1543, and he challenged this theory, and he thought instead that the sun was in the center of the universe. And this is known now as the heliocentric theory, or sun-centered theory. It's a little bit different than our theory today, um, a little bit incorrect, but it was, was correct in knowing that the sun was the center and things revolved around the sun instead of the earth being the center, right? So this was a very huge change, right? Putting something besides the earth as the center of the universe was a really big deal. Now Copernicus published this the last year of his life. Um, he was scared in some ways to do so, um, but he wrote the, the book called On the Revolutions of the Heavenly Spheres. And even before he published it, it was published in Nuremberg, which is in today, like, Germany. Um, some people thought, like, Martin Luther, remember we learned about him? He, you know, heard these rumors of his theory, and he called Copernicus a fool. Now, Kepler actually made some changes to this theory, Johannes Kepler, and he said, you know what? He was right, but he was wrong about this circle. He discovered that the planets traveled in, traveled in orbits, not ovals. And now fast forward to Galileo, who lived in um, what's now Italy from 1564 to 1642. And he made a bunch of discoveries, one being that the Jup Jupiter has four moons. Um, he made this discovery around 1610, the moons Callisto, Europa, Ganymede, and Io. He also discovered that the sun had dark spots and that the Earth's moon had a rough surface. Now, you might think, what's the big deal about that? People didn't think the earth, I mean, I'm sorry, the moon was made out of things like rock. They thought that the heavens were made out of these pure heavenly substances, uh, like nougat, maybe. All right, so Galileo also supported Copernicus's idea that the sun was the center, and this was, you know, challenging the authority of the church. So he went on basically a trial. Um, it was called the Galileo Affair before the church. And something he used for evidence that the sun was the center was by the tides on the ocean. He said that it proved evidence of motion. Anyway, in 1633, um, he did take back these ideas out of fear of being killed, but he was placed under house arrest. So he first started um, you know, producing these ideas in 1610 in what he called the Starry Messenger, his publication. But it took you know, a few decades for him to really go to trial before this. So now when they realized that, hey, he was wrong here, other people started saying, well, you know, what else are we wrong about? And let's find out. And one of those people was Francis Bacon, who lived in England from 1561 to 1626. 
and he encouraged people to experiment, you know, make your own conclusions, see what else we're wrong about. And really these ideas um, inspired what we now call the scientific method. He also was known for something called empiricism, which means that all of our knowledge is based off of our sensory experiences, you know, what we see, what we hear, and therefore we need to experiment with those senses. Rene Descartes, who lived in France from 1596 to 1650, Base, you know, building off that said, yes, we need to reject everything we know, doubt everything we know, and then prove it correct. Unlike Bacon, however, he thought that people can't really trust their senses. Now we also have Isaac Newton, who was from England in 1643 to 1727, and he was what's known as a deist, D-E-I-S-T, and that believes that God made all these laws and it made the universe work, and now we have to put those laws in motion. So here's some of the inventions that made the scientific revolution possible. And, did you get that? A star with something you want to know more about. And then we can talk about it next class. So everyone have a great break if I haven't seen you. We'll see you next year. And your password for this video is vacation.